Okay, well, um, good morning and welcome um, members of the media who are participating in this news conference, any members of the public uh, who may be joining us as well. My name is Wade Kapsakavich, mayor of the city of Toledo. Uh, we're joined uh, by uh, Dr. Postal, uh, the president of the University of Toledo, and a number of other individuals that, uh, from the Human Relations Co uh, Commission and the University of Toledo that we'll be um, introducing as we go through this relatively short program. Um, uh, but we, what we want to do today is to uh, make sure the community uh, knows about the specifics, uh, the times, uh, the logistics for the 20th anniversary uh, of really, I think, one of the great events in Toledo every year. It always comes at the beginning of the year, and so it kicks off uh, every calendar year kind of on a good note, on a spirit of uh, unity and togetherness. I might say that, um, uh, you know, it's one of a number uh, of really exciting partnerships that the city of Toledo does with its university uh, every year. And of course, I'm talking about the 2021 uh, Dr. Martin Luther, Luther King Jr. Unity Day uh, celebration. Um, the event this year is gonna be a little different uh, than it has been in years past. And I think we all know why we are living in uh, difficult times. Uh, the COVID uh, crisis, um, uh, you know, I, I think we are, you know, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccine starting to make its way throughout the country, but we're certainly, uh, you know, we're certainly not in a position to gather uh, together like we love doing at uh, Savage Hall and have done for the last 20 years. So we're going to, uh, we're going to be doing this virtually. Um, and um, that's, that'll be the biggest and perhaps only substantive change uh, to the program. Um, it's just something we have to do, and uh, my hope is that our friends in the media can help communicate to the public uh, this change so we can have uh, as much participation as possible. If you want to watch uh, the live stream on Monday, um, Monday, January 8th, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, it's going to start at 10 a.m. Um, you can get to that live stream link uh, off of the city's webpage, the Human Relations Commission's webpage. I'll actually, uh, in a very analog fashion, uh, read the address to you right now, uh, facebook.com backslash Toledo HRC. Uh, that's the uh, uh, Toledo Human Relation Commission's um, Facebook page, and you'll be able to find a live stream there. And there'll be plenty of links to it, uh, you know, through all of our social media platforms uh, as well. So uh, 10 a.m. Monday. Um, we're going to be welcoming uh, the community in uh, to our, uh, our our virtual event and we're excited um, to welcome our keynote speaker at 11 a.m. Uh, our keynote speaker uh, is named Austin Channing Brown. She is a Toledo native uh, and we are so proud of her accomplishments that though I won't be able to do it in person uh, because of uh, you know, the social distancing required this year, um, I, I am going to bestow upon her a key to the city uh, because uh, from her roots in Toledo, uh, she has become really one of the nation's uh, leaders uh, and certainly a thought leader, uh, uh, but also a, a moral force on uh, questions of uh, race and especially the interplay of race and faith. Uh, she's a New York Times uh, best-selling author, and uh, as a Toledoan, I'm proud of her, we're proud of her. So she is going at 11 a.m., there's going to be a live Q&A with her, and that'll be moderated uh, by John Jones, uh, who many of us know as a community leader, the uh, president of Hope Toledo, among many other uh, accomplishments. Also this year, uh, the Toledo Museum of Art is going to be open uh, from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m., uh, as sort of a place of, uh, you know, contemplation, reflection, uh, maybe even meditation on uh, uh, Dr. King and his message and uh, his life. You know, that's also something that maybe we haven't done in the past, but we want to provide that uh, avenue to folks at a time when we can't gather in person the way we'd like to. So uh, we want to thank the Toledo Museum of Art for um, uh, you know, providing us that space. Uh, 
the free admission will be offered. Uh, it's being called Radical Tradition, uh, American Quilts and Social Change. In that gallery, uh, that's where people uh, will be able to, to, to gather um, right after the Martin Luther King uh, uh, Unity Day event is over. And I, we hope people take advantage of that. I wanna make sure that we're thanking the sponsors who make this possible, ProMedica, uh, Mercy Health, the Multi-Faith Council of Northwest Ohio, the Chamber of Commerce, Toledo Lucas County Public Library. Um, I think we all know that uh, these are unusual and I might say difficult times for our country. Uh, we are, we are, we're divided. We're divided as a country um, and it's at, times like this, frankly, that I think um, Dr. King's message uh, of unity and togetherness is not only powerful, it's always powerful, but it's more important than ever. Um, you know, at this event Monday, people will be, uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, reciting their favorite Martin Luther King quotes and you know, seeking uh, to make connections to modern parallels. The one that's been on my heart, frankly, ever since the events at the U.S. Capitol uh, on January 6th were, uh, was, was a line where Dr. King said that, that love is the only force powerful enough to turn an enemy into a friend. And it just strikes me, uh, and this is off the nice fancy agenda that they gave me, but it just strikes me we need to, in our lives, in our country right now, we, we need more friends. We need to work to make uh, uh, to make enemies friends and that you know that begins with love you know dr king was right uh so i'm looking forward to this event the city of toledo is so proud to be a part of it and to to walk through the next part of our agenda this morning i'd like to uh introduce dr postal whom we all know uh president of the university of toledo and uh, ask him to make some remarks well good morning everyone and uh thank you so much uh mayor capsicavage for the introduction and and for your very uh, fine and helpful comments. We are uh, just delighted to once again partner with the city of Toledo as we all join together to celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, while we can't be together this year, we are uh, determined to continue this 20 year tradition that we have enjoyed with the city. And thanks to technology, we'll be able to, uh, to do so in, in virtual fashion. As the mayor pointed out, we, uh, we all have been uh, struggling uh, with the pandemic, uh, with issues around political divisiveness, with issues around systemic racism, uh, which all of us uh, need to make uh, renewed efforts to combat. Uh, th this is a time when unity is, is very much needed. And so I think it's in this spirit that we come together uh, and celebrate the legacy of, of Dr. King. So uh, I know I'll be present and I hope all of you will as well at 10 a.m. on Monday uh, as we host this, this virtual event. Uh, the mayor mentioned the, uh, the Human Relations Commission Facebook page for the city. You'll also, uh, if interested, be able to see this event on the University of Toledo's uh, Unity Day Celebration website. Uh, so there are a couple of ways uh, to get to this virtual activity. It should not be difficult to access. Uh, it'll be a, a great program in addition to the, uh, the keynote speech at 11 o'clock. There will also be performances by the Toledo Opera, uh, Taya's Dance Studio, and then also uh, a, a spoken word poet. Uh, and so this, this should be quite a, quite a celebration on Monday morning. Uh, I do want to uh, thank the dedicated committee that has worked to, uh, to put this activity together, members of uh, the mayor's team, certainly members of our team here at the University of Toledo, also the Human Rights Commission and many others uh, throughout the community who have all partnered to make this, this possible. This is really an important opportunity for us, not just to celebrate the legacy of Dr. King, but also to understand and embark upon the work that all of us must continue to do to make this legacy become a reality. So please join us and thank you very much. All right, and thank you. And now I'd like to turn it over to Erin Baker, uh, who is the chair of the Human Relations Commission. Ask her to give remarks and uh, uh, perhaps introduce the other members of the HRC who are 
uh, joining us today and ask any of them to make remarks uh, should they want to do so. So Aaron. Thank you. Uh, as chair of the Human Relations Commission, it's my pleasure, um, as already been stated, to come annually together with our community to celebrate and honor Dr. King. Uh, we strive to uphold his legacy daily within HRC and the work that we do to support a safe, energetic, and livable city by working with residents to overcome prejudice and build mutual respect. Uh, this year's keynote speaker, Toledo native and author, Austin Channing Brown, embodies this vision. Our event theme is appropriately named after her book, I'm Still Here. I think we all can say that we truly understand the notion of the world that we're living right now and have lived in uh, for quite some time that we have a bit of a, a feeling that we are, are proud to be able to say that we are still here and we're surviving, but also looking forward to, to thrive. Um, it is our hope that her speech um, will be able to allow all of us to have continued critical conversations about social and racial justice. Um, we're so happy to partner uh, with many institutions throughout the community. OH Stan, the YWCA, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Women of Toledo, and the Toledo Lucas County Public Library to be able to host virtual book discussions throughout the month of January. Uh, we also are also very happy to partner again with the museum to be able to bring the community together so safe and socially to be able to meditate and con contemplate on the legacy of Dr. King. Um, it, it's monumental. This is the very first time that the museum has ever opened its doors on um, MLK Day. So I want everyone to be able throughout the community to take advantage of this opportunity um, to participate in those exhibits that have been extended specifically to honor Dr. King's legacy. Again, check out um, the HRC Facebook and Instagram page. Our handle is Toledo HRC. Um, I do invite all of our uh, committee members that are here with us to um, open up your videos and, and, and your microphones to be able to add any additional comments and just to be recognized at this time. Well, I'll go ahead and speak. <laughs> um, I want to say that I'm very excited about this year's event. So as I said, I've, I've said to the committee as we were planning this, um, we were in the beginning feeling very down that we were having to do it virtually and not being able to connect with the community in the way that we normally do. However, I have turned that around in my mind because the reality is doing it virtually, we may actually be able to reach more people than we would have normally been able to reach. Um, and so where we have to deal with mother nature and the weather uh, normally on MLK day this year, all we have to deal with is potentially access to the technology. However, I do wanna mention something that was not mentioned earlier for those who do not have Wi-Fi but do have cable perhaps, um, BCAN will be streaming the event live at 10 a.m. along with all of the other ways that you can access that event, but they also will be re-airing the event at 8 p.m. on BCAN on Monday evening. Okay, well, uh uh, seeing uh, no other members who would like to make comments, I'd, I'd like to thank the committee for its hard work and uh, the two women we just heard from, uh, Aaron and Malika Bell, um, actually um, are the committee co-chair. They've sort of co-chaired uh, the effort to make today possible. So I want to give them an extra shout out and recognition for their hard work. Um, with that, um, we, we have some members of the media with us, and I'd like to open it up. Uh, to any questions uh, any of them may have. Um, I, you can either use the raise your hand function or uh, uh, somehow uh, reach out to us so we can make sure that your questions Mary, being our first um, journalist is James Stark with 13 ABC. James, please go ahead. Mr. Mayor, uh, just wanted to say welcome and thank you, but uh, let's just talk a little bit about, you, you mentioned the divisiveness that we have going on in our country right now. Why is it important that we focus on Dr. King's message, especially in such a trying time that we're in right now? Well, I think it is because 
we all know that um, that that this division in our country, this political division, is wrong. It doesn't feel right. It's not how uh, it, it's it doesn't conform with the values on which our country was were founded. Um, uh, you know, we want to be united. You know, we want to be a more perfect union. And so when that doesn't happen, and when you see events like what happened at the Capitol last week, um, you know, it really strikes at the uh, soul of what, who we are as Americans. It doesn't feel right. It's not right. It's counter to, to our best attributes, or as Lincoln said, the, the better angels of our nature. We don't, we don't want this to be happening. Nobody liked what they saw at the Capitol. Nobody enjoys the tension uh, that clearly exists, at least in political discourse in this country. So when you think of the life of Dr. King, not only are there, are there the inspiring words, and I might say that there's another wonderful quote that talks about where he says that, you know, that the real measure of a man isn't, you know, what he does during times of comfort and ease, but frankly, what he does during difficult times, during times of controversy. Well, we're living in those times. And um, when, you, when you ponder his life um, and everything that he sought to do and accomplish, it was a uh, struggle against uh, power in a lot of ways. You think of the Birmingham uh, bus boycott, which by the way, he led when he was 26 years old. Um, you know, the march from Selma to Montgomery, um, everything, Voting Rights Act, Civil Rights Act, everything he was a part of, he was pushing against the power structure of his country, but he was doing so peacefully uh, and with an eye toward unity. And I just think that there are so many lessons uh, to be taken from his life, the way he conducted himself. You know, there, there is a sense, um, you know, I've heard people say, well, you know, eh, you know what, we have to, um, we tried, we, we had to be violent because no one was listening to us. O other words, well, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. would disagree. And for what it is worth, so would Mahatma Gandhi, and I might dare say Jesus of Nazareth. I think you can accomplish quite a lot peacefully with dignity and honor. Uh, and Dr. King did. And I just think that's what we need more than ever these days. I don't see any other questions from members of the media. I'll give them an opportunity. You guys can raise your hand, or if you want to type a question in the chat, we'll make sure it gets to um, both Mayor or Dr. Postal or one of our committee members. But just to reiterate, the event will be live this coming Monday on January 18th. Oh, James Stark, go ahead. I guess I'm back asking the questions again. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the event on Monday. Uh, again, obviously things look a lot different this year than they have in years past. Just what are the extra steps being taken to make sure the experience is as immersive as possible, especially due to the fact that you can't be there in person? I think someone from the committee would be uh, able to answer that. Politicians like me, we always get a chance to talk. Let's hear from uh, some real citizens. <laughs> well, actually, I would like for Christina to respond to that question just because she has been um, impeccable at arranging. She worked with David Bush and our videographer, Creadio, to put together this pre-recorded portion of the program, and she worked to arrange all the talent acts. So, Christina. Sure. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor and Dr. Postal. Um, <clears throat> um, the difference this year, um, in the content of our actual event is that we are bringing together people of all walks of life, a very diverse group of people from young, older, to different races, different communities. And our hope and our goal in this is not only to wrap a virtual hug around our city, uh, but to inspire people to, to love one another and to bring, as the mayor was saying, you know, the love that um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. exhibited so well. 
one of the quotes that we um, are standing on, especially during these times, is that of his quotes is darkness cannot drive out darkness and light, only light can do that. And hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And our hope through this, um, we have dancers, we have uh, recited speeches, we have um, the Toledo Opera is joining us with several um, songs and just a lot of local talent that are just giving of their time. And this year we hope that people will be able to see and feel through this virtually that we're a city that embraces love and we're a city that embraces diversity and that um, us together, we can make our community better. Thank you. Okay, we have Mikey Fairchild. Mikey, go ahead on mute. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Um, who do, Christina, who, what organization do you represent? I am a member of the Human Relations Commission and I've been on the Martin Luther King Jr. Um, committee for two years now. Um, that it, that's my volunteer work. I also am the executive director of a local nonprofit called Mom's House of Toledo. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, if there looks like there are no other questions from the media, I, I, I guess I should say since he asked the first two questions, I would uh, just personally want to welcome uh, Jim back to town. Uh, he, uh, we're excited to have him as the morning anchor and uh, have him back in our community. And really just thank everyone uh, uh, who's a part of today and who's going to be a part of Monday. Martin Luther King is unquestionably one of the great figures in American history. He's special to a lot of people. I'd, say he's special to Toledo. He gave a very memorable speech in this city uh, at the field house at Scott High School uh, just a few months before he died in, in uh, late 1967. And we uh, remember that day. We remember everything about his life and what he stood for. And we're excited that despite the curveball that COVID has thrown at us, we're going to honor his life and his mission uh, and his message, which, as I said at the beginning, I think is more crucial now than ever, given what we're going through as a country. So Looking at the screen, it doesn't look like there's any more questions or comments from anyone. Again, I want to thank Dr. Postal and uh, Aaron and uh, her team. Everyone at the Human Relations Commission at the university has made this possible. We're looking forward to a great day Monday, and we hope everyone can participate. So thank you.